So I start off this conversation of what's causing this epidemic by showing you this. It's a smoking gun. Everyone's looking for the smoking gun. And a lot of researchers are spending a lot of money looking for the smoking gun in the genes. And for most parents who have experience of a child with some kind of diagnosis, they go into the pediatrician's office and they're like, how can my child have autism? There's no, like, there's no autism in my family. And the pediatrician says, well, we don't really understand why. It's probably genetic. That's the thing we keep hearing again and again and again. No matter what your condition is, it's probably genetic. So we're spending so much money, so much money is going into genetic research. And I'm going to tell you right now, the answer is not in the genes. It's not the smoking gun. So what is it? In my book, I wrote a book, not a pamphlet, because this is all the things that are causing this. Okay, there are some things that are playing a larger role than others in terms of the root causes of this epidemic, but there are probably hundreds of thousands of things that I, as an individual, could identify as factors in this epidemic of chronic illnesses in children. It's a perfect storm with a couple of really big triggers, but it's a perfect storm. And these things include antibiotics, glyphosate, vaccines, proton pump inhibitors, NSAIDs, birth control pills, asthma and steroid medications, anesthesia medications, processed foods, GMOs, metals and minings, coal, power plants, cosmetics, personal care products, lack of full spectrum, sunlight, infections, EMFs, cell phones, toxins in children's products, pesticides, herbicides, fast food, the American diet, sedentary lifestyles, American food in general, <laughs> there, the list goes on and on. This is really just a partial list, but I literally could sit here with you for the next five hours and give you references for every single one of these things and how they might be contributing to the chronic illness. And the truth, chronic illness epidemic, and the truth is they often act in concert. They're synergistic. So in other words, if you take, if you get exposure to a toxin and you've had an antibiotic, that's going to quadruple the impact of that toxin on your body. I'll explain why in a minute. So if you look at this list, you start identifying there's some big bad guys out there that are causing this problem. When I started um, this exploration, this is how I felt. I was like, oh, it's big pharma. It's the chemical companies. It's the coal industry. It's big ag. I was so mad at them. They did this to my babies. That's how I felt. But you know what? Who do you work for? How do you pay your bills? What company do you work for? How do you make your livelihood? Because you know what? If you start blaming just the companies, who are the companies? It's us. It's America. It's our culture. It's the choices we make every single day. We choose to use our cell phones. We make choices about our medical care. We make choices about the food we eat. We are the enemy. But you know why? Because it's our culture. Because this is what we've been brought up to think is right, is normal, is what you do. And how do you separate yourself from your culture? How do you do that? So you think about this question of why are so many kids sick? And I give you this answer, that, oh, there's thousands of things that are causing our kids to be sick. Well, you want to boil it down? You know what it is? It's modern industrial living. It's how we live. A mentor of mine, Dr. Russell Jaffe, who was a lab director at um, the NIH, and also um, is just a great physician, has always said, it's what we eat, it's what we drink, it's what we think, it's what we do in the modern world. It's really a perfect storm. But I love this cartoon because what it shows is this experience that a lot of us have where we think we're not impacted by the autism epidemic. Like, we think we're not touched by it because maybe we don't have a child with autism and there isn't any autism in our family. It doesn't really bother or impact us, right? Well, we're all in the same boat here. 
And what people who have children who have environmental allergies, a little asthma, something that's mild and really doesn't bother them that much, or a little eczema, what they don't realize is they were a couple environmental assaults away from having a child with autism. We're in the same boat. So you can see in this image here, you have the, the, the children with autism and ADHD kind of like in it. They're at the bottom of the boat, really digging out. And the people at the top, they're in the same boat. That boat's going down. We need to see it. Every single person living on this planet needs to see how they're connected to the autism epidemic. And they need to see the importance of stopping it right now. So it kind of feels like a cop-out, doesn't it, for me to be like, the epidemic of chronic illness is caused by modern industrial living. Just sounds like a really bald-faced generalization that doesn't really mean anything. But let's break this down. How do we know that autism is related to asthma, which is related to Crohn's disease, which is related to depression? How do we know these things are all part of the same thing, and that same thing is modern industrial living? Well, let's be a little, do a little detective work here. So if you look at all those kids who have those soft signs, those symptoms, like the chronic constipation, the chronic diarrhea, the red cheeks after eating, and then you also look at the kids who have asthma and the kids who have autism and the kids who have ADHD, and you look really finely with a, with a microscope at what they have in common. And you can do this now. I mean, this is what's amazing about science and technology is we've developed all these incredible diagnostics that we can do to evaluate what's going on physiologically in the body. So if you look at all of these kids, you do lab work on them, you'll see common things across the board. I don't care if they have depression or whether they have asthma, they have a lot of things in common. And these are the things that you're going to see common. Gut dysbiosis, which I'll explain in a little bit. That's an imbalance in the bacteria in your gastrointestinal system. Immune dysregulation, which is a fancy word for just saying the immune system's gone awry. I'll explain that in a minute. Cellular toxicity. That's no surprise. We live in a toxic soup. Nutritional deficiencies, also not a surprise because we eat crap in this country, just to be blunt. Um, hormone and endocrine disruptions and other kinds of really scientific things like mitochondrial dysfunction, which is how we produce energy in our cells, or oxidative stress, which is um, free radicals floating around in your body, or um, the foundational thing that links all of these conditions, inflammation. Inflammation is your body's way of protecting itself when it's under stress, whether that's emotional stress, toxic stress, any kind of stress, your body responds with inflammation. So you look at any of these conditions, even the psychiatric ones. Like, do you understand we're on the precipice of a major health revolution and, and we're understanding now that psychiatric diagnoses like bipolar disorder and, dis and schizophrenia are not genetic, they're not brain-based. There's inflammation in these people's bodies. Same thing goes for autism. It's not genetic, it's not brain-based, and there's a whole heck of a lot of inflammation in those kids' bodies. So, again, I have to let you know, I actually was trained as a historian, and I have to apply historical perspective to all of this so that we can see what's going on here. So if we think about, all right, all of these kids have these physiological dysfunctions, all these things that are breaking down in their bodies. Well, what has changed over the last 20, 40, 60, 80 years that might be contributing to this? It's our daily exposures. A fancy word for that is our exposome. What's in the air and the water, what goes on our skin? How has that changed? What are we eating and how has that changed? How do we grow our food? How has that changed? Our medical care, wildly different from medical care just 60, 70 years ago. Our birthing practices. For thousands and thousands of years, humans have had a way of bringing babies into this earth in a very beautiful, natural, peaceful way, and now it's a medical procedure. Oh, and by the way, I was doing some research the other day, and I just learned this, which I didn't realize. Do you know what the number one inpatient procedure is in the United States? C-section. Somebody in the audience said it. C-section. Really? That's mind-boggling to me. Um, how we work, how we play, how we spend our free time, these are all things that have changed drastically. I don't know how much you realize 
Um, the post-World War II era has completely changed the way human beings live on this planet. And while we have amazing advances, amazing technology, amazing new understand of, of understanding of many new things, we also are getting sicker and sicker by the day. And part of the reason that is is because human beings thrive in a natural environment with natural rhythms. Like we had this amazing system of people living on on this planet in harmony with nature for thousands and thousands of years. And in this, this last century, the 20th century, we totally decided that that was wrong, that we were going to move indoors, we were going to start eating artificial food, using artificial light, and just completely disconnect ourselves from nature. So what happens is, when you put a human being in a natural environment with natural rhythms, meaning being outdoor, touching the soil and the earth, and you know, subscribing to the circadian rhythms of life, you know, getting up when the sun gets up and, and going to bed and winding down when the sun goes down, eating natural plant and animal-based foods, and having natural exposures like the sunlight and fresh air, um, humans thrive in that environment. And I'll tell you what, if you took your child who has a chronic inflammatory condition and you moved them into that environment and you did a really, really good job of it and tried to protect them from sort of the synthetic environment of the modern world, they might not recover from their chronic condition, but I'll tell you, they're going to get a whole lot better. They just will. Because humans can survive in the modern world, but they can't thrive. What do I mean by survive? I mean that they're like we're limping along. We're like, you know, like we're just struggling to survive with this natural um, experience gone from our lives. So we have artificial light, we have artificial food, we have pesticides. Our, I mean, our bodies. I am somebody who's very conscientious about food, um, food, what food goes in my body and what toxins go in my body. I'm still filled with toxins. There's no way to avoid it. I remember one time when I was working with a practitioner who um, helped me detoxify my children as I was going through this recovery journey with them. And I was so proud. I came in and I said, all right, I got rid of all the toxic stuff in the house. And there's no toxic exposures in my kids. And, you know, she was still evaluating some of their lab work and stuff. And she's like, oh, no, they still have some toxicity here. And I was like, what? I got rid of everything. How's that possible? And she laughed at me. She's like, you can't get rid of toxins in this environment. They're everywhere. And I was like, oh, I feel so dumb. This environment is so, so destroyed by humans. It's really hard to avoid all the toxins that are out there. It's part of the reason why we are struggling, why we're surviving and not thriving.